So, for today I will speak about the seeker of truth. So before any questions are asked about uh, the spiritual path, choices, techniques and the what to do's, or in the new languages what not to do's or whatever, uh, first we have to know uh, what is a seeker of truth, you see? This has become important uh, in a very extensive way because I'm seeing a lot of questions and a lot of people asking questions about spirituality, about the spiritual path uh, and all that involves them. And uh, these questions, they seem to be questions of seekers of truth yet they cannot get the answers that the seeker of truth would get. And why is that? Uh, because of this, I have uh, used a different denomination for uh, these dif different seekers. One, I call them seekers of well-being, and the others, I call them seekers of truth. And there's a big distinction about this, you see? Seekers of well-being, they are nice people. Uh, they can be in a spiritual path, knowingly, or they may, may not be. They may be what we called, or what is called, or can be called as worldly people with worldly goals. The only thing that changes from this worldly people with worldly goals to the seeker of well-being, the spiritual seeker of well-being, is uh, their knowledge about spirituality, or about God also. Nothing else, because the motivations are the same. And why is this important? Well, this is important because the understanding of the seeker of well-being and the understanding of a seeker of truth, they are opposite, you see? Um, from the same teachings, they will get opposite, opposite understandings. So, if you give spiritual teachings or clarifications to a seeker of well-being, he will do the same with it as he, he has been doing until now, with uh, even before he had any spiritual knowledge. Because his motivations are the same. So whatever he can grasp of the teachings, it is something else that has nothing to do with spirituality. You see? There is this... Um, this idea, and there is this expression now, that is called uh, mainstream uh, spirituality. Because it is uh, going everywhere, to every house, everywhere you see people speaking about spirituality, it has become mainstream. Well, this is a naive understanding, because this is not what's been happening, you see? Worldly people with worldly goals have discovered a new hope in their lives to satisfy the same uh, desires, the same goals, the same weakness, all of this. A new hope, spirituality, the knowledge of God, what is called the knowledge of the, the spiritual laws, has become a new hope for the same delusion. So you see uh, seekers trying to master behaviors, trying to master in languages, especially the Advaitic language. This is the most, uh, uh, maybe the most is too much, but okay. One of the biggest ones that are trying to be mastered. So perhaps when they master the language, then they will be happy. Then they will know the truth. But in their minds, Happiness and truth has the same, the same ideas behind, the same goals that they always had. So nothing has changed, you see? So, what is a seeker of truth? I will probably have to make more uh, takes on this uh, subject because it is an extensive one, it's very difficult to cover it at, in one time. 
But the seeker of truth, it is the highest of human evolution. You see? What you call life, normal life, um, it's just preparing, preparing people for this moment. For the moment to live the life of a seeker of truth. Um, the seeker of truth, his life is an epic. It's not a normal life, it is an epic. And an epic, you cannot live an epic in the couch of your living room. It is impossible, you see? So, like I was saying, the life of the seeker of truth is something magnificent. Uh, it is an epic of um, uh, uncomparable proportions, you see? It is not an ordinary life. It is not meant to be an ordinary life. What you are, li what most of you are living is an ordinary life. You see, first of all, the seeker of truth is like anyone else. It has the same desires, the same weaknesses, the same fears, uh, the same hopes, more or less the same. And this is what makes him alive. This is what makes him uh, capable of living the epic. Without this, if he has no interest per se, he's dead, in a way. But the difference of the seeker of truth is that he knows that life and its promises, even though they tempt him, even though he feels them as a very big need, he knows that they will not bring him anything new, anything different. He knows somewhere in himself, he knows that life, human life, uh, these circumstances, the world, is distracting him of something much more important, much more greater. You see? It is distracting him from the real game. And the real game is freedom and not security, not being accepted. It has nothing to do about this. A human life, a human normal life is a life where the person hmm, moves according to his fears, to his hopes, to his desires, not questioning from where it is from where are these things coming? He doesn't question it. He doesn't know the reality of it. He just moves with it. You see? So his ideas of happiness, they are a product of uh, his sadnesses, his fears, his insecurities. This is where his ideas of freedom come, of happiness. So he moves like a donkey after a carrot, following the carrot, not seeing where is the, where is the carrot coming from. He's just following them. The seeker of truth, he feels these poles, the same ones, but he is not following them, he is abstracting from them. He has understood that fears if you do what you are told, if you act according to the fears, they will just increase and increase and increase. So the first step for a seeker of truth, the first map for the seeker of truth is, are his own fears. The exact thing that he has been running away from since ever, since he knows himself as someone. A normal life, a normal human life, 
a life of the seeker of well-being is marked by the same map, the map of the fears, of the insecurities, of the fragilities, of sadness. He moves to avoid to be exposed to his own fears. He moves to fight against his own beliefs about himself, of low self-esteem, of this and that, blah, 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 all that thing. It is a mechanical path because it has no creativity, no spontaneity, because he is just avoiding his fears. When he reached some maturity, when he is trying to become a seeker of truth, he will use the same map with an opposite intention. You see? His fears will show them the next step as he goes through, through it, as he let himself be exposed to them without reacting, without doing anything to change the circumstances until they lose the power that fears have over him. In this process, he gains uh, his strength, his lost strength, his forgotten strength. Without it, other steps are not possible. Reverence is not possible. Surrender is not possible. Divine love is not possible. Freedom, not possible. And I understand there is a, a lot of concepts at this moment about freedom, love, and all of these ideas of nothingness and all of this. It is true, yes, and all of that is correct. But it's not correct for the majority of you that are speaking this. Not yet. The first step is to become a seeker of truth. And for the seeker of truth, there is no right and wrong in the way that morality dictates, that um, ethics dictates, that uh, society dictates, values of society. Sometimes the seeker of truth has to go against this, you see? So, if you're still trapped with the need to belong, the need to... all these needs, you will succumb, you see? Because society will have always expectations that society has towards its individuals, those who are a part of it. The seeker of truth he is there, but he is not a part of it. Not in the same way. In the form, maybe, but in the content, no. You see? So the seeker of well-being is trying to improve the world because his motivations are worldly. The seeker of truth is not interested anymore in changing the world, making the world a better place. But you know something funny? The real seeker of truth has an impact on this so-called world thousands of times more than the seekers of well-being. Maybe this can be a subject for another conversation. But if the worldly people knew the value of the seeker of truth, for sure they would create the conditions for all the seekers to have a no worries path. They would support them, they would encourage them. But then the seeker of truth would be lost. Being alone, not being understood, it is a present. It is what makes possible for the seeker of truth to arise. Because he has to go against everything and everyone. Yes. And what dictates this is not his mind, his own heart. You see? All of you know this. 
what I'm going to say next. All of you. Your heart pushes you in one direction and your mind comes immediately to distract you, to make you stop this nonsense and it will give a lot of justifications. Now, especially the spiritual justifications. Nothing to be done. It is true, if it is true for you. And this is not your mind, your mind knows nothing. You see? This path of choosing what is the best uh, spiritual practice, what is the best path, what is the best philosophy, what is the best this and that and this and that, these discussions, these spiritual discussions where one opinion is given on top of the other one, this, this has nothing to do yet with the seeker of truth. Path. Path. Don't tremble with this uh, word path. Some of you tremble. But you have to be more honest with yourselves. It is the heart that says what is important next. Your fears say what is important next. You see? Even intuition is not reliable in the way that you imagine. Because if your motivations are worldly, if it is to improve the dream, Intuition will be there, as it is available for everybody. Giving just subtle, sometimes less subtle indications that it is, there is more into this world than, than it is seen. It is very subtle and it is directed to human life, human normal life, with human normal endeavors. nothing else. So the heart, and when the heart is speaking to the seeker of truth, speaks in one way. When the heart is speaking to the seeker of well-being, it speaks in a different way. When it speaks to the seeker of well-being, it speaks in a way to improve his life, to make him feel good, Feeling good, this is something that catches the majority of you. The need to feel good. You see? When the heart speaks to a, the seeker of truth, when there is a seeker of truth there, the heart speaks, the seeker trembles. Because the guidance, the direction, goes immediately against some of his fears. Questioning them. And saying, now you do this. But if he moves around, if he's scared and wants to justify remaining still, you will be able to do so with wisdom or so-called wisdom. He can just choose which, which wisdom to apply here to remain still. Oh, the best one, there's nothing to do. That can be true. It is true, of course. But again, not for the ones that are living with fears, seeking affection, attention, acceptance, uh, seeking healing and all these things. The seeker of truth is a lion amongst seekers. just has to find the courage to affirm it, to see for himself, to see for himself. As the voice speaks for the seeker of truth, the seeker trembles, fears will arise intensely, the mind will Ah, speak a, a lot to stop that, stop that. For the seeker of well-being, these signs will tell him, no, this is not right because I'm not feeling good. For the seeker of truth, as he trembles, he recognizes 
the validity of that. For him it is a clear indication that is, this is the step that follows. So to ask questions about which technique, which path, what is the best, should I abandon everything, should I stay where I am, this is useless. The process of a seeker of truth is alive. There is indications, guidance, presence all the time. You just have to be awake for it. And it is in your intimate space that everything happens. You see? And it is an epic full of adventures. It is a life worth living, even if you don't find what you're looking for. It is the greatest adventures. I will speak more about this because there are a lot of implications like um, devotion, God, all these things that have been somehow well, lost in front of your eyes, but lost. But this is not for today. For today, I want you to understand the fiber of a seeker of truth. He goes after his own fears, fearing, fearing them, but in a fearless attitude. With this, you will experience the spiritual fire that arises. After he awakens, the seeker of truth awakens, not the awakening. Then, these questions about techniques and all of this and, and the understandings and all of this makes sense, can be answered by a master. Before this, it is something else. The seeker of truth is present inside every one of you. The majority till now has been distracting with life. You have not taken yet the path of a seeker of truth because you are protecting your worldly desires. The seekers that has, have been starting now, they don't have the means, the capability to have this understanding. But the veterans, they do. And most of you, inside of yourselves, you have been testing all these philosophies, these new understandings, and you know that you are stuck. You just need to be honest with yourselves. And this is the best help you can give to those who are following. And if you really want to improve the world, if inside of yourself there is something and I know there are a lot of you that have this. This need, this dharmic need to improve the world. You have to understand that it is not by running from your fears, but by becoming a seeker of truth. The vibration of a seeker of truth, only its presence, makes a thousand times more than you can do in your communities. Participating. As you are there, you are part of the problem, whatever that means, and not of the solution, whatever that means. But the worst part is that you're turning your backs to yourself. There is a big need, there's a big change happening. There is always change happening. But okay, 
in these times there is this uprising in spirituality you see life is transforming I don't want to go in too much into this now but cutting short human life as you know it is changing before there was not so much awareness about spiritual laws spiritual philosophies there was the awareness of God but in a different way now people are moving towards a life based on spiritual values more aware of these values of these more subtle realities so the spiritual people of today will be the worldly people of tomorrow because they have a different language different vision they are good people very good people of course they will make the, the world more beautiful etc etc but they are still based by fears desires and the same thing so you see different communities arising but then it is the same values security based um, lives fighting for survival, fighting for security, fighting for acceptance, gathering in communities which are friendly so that they can feel good, protected and, uh, how do you say this, uh, feel safe. And this has nothing of spiritual in it. And if you're following this path, you are depriving yourself from your gold, from your right. This is a very interesting moment. You have to arise the seeker of truth inside of you. There is a giant inside of each and every one of you just waiting for an opportunity to arise. Your fears are telling you, don't do this, just do that, comply, comply. Or else, this is the moment where you stand up and you say, or else what? Let me see what happens. Is the bus coming in my direction? Is it going to run over me? So I will sit quietly and wait to see what happens after it. Let's see. I'll be trembling, of course, but I will remain. This is an example, metaphorically example. Unless it isn't a metaphor, each one of you has its own path. And each one of you is telling a different story for the ones who are coming behind, for the seekers of well-being, they are looking at you and like in every part of human life, they will try to stop you. Even seekers of truth will try to stop you. No one can understand you because you are unique. So there is a you cannot share everything. So the seekers of well-being, the worldly seekers and the seekers of well-being, if there is so much a difference, there is a little bit. They will try both to stop you in their own way. They will give you examples. They will give you a lot of things. Because you facing your fears is awakening something inside of them also. And they don't want to see it. So they will say it is nonsense. It can be. But if your heart is telling you to do it, if your mind is going against, if your fears are arising, 99.9% .9 of chances that this is the right thing to do.
after all these uh, takes that I, I will be doing uh, eventually, if you have any questions about, because I will continue with this subject, if you have any questions about this, any doubts, send them. And if it is a serious question, I will answer it. Here I will answer the things I cannot answer in satsang, for example, because it creates a lot of confusion. There I can only speak for seekers of truth. A lion amongst men. This is the seeker of truth. It is the highest of human evolution. All other subsequent lives that can be seen into the past, whatever that means, is just a preparation. Just a preparation. But after a while, facing fears, of conquering fears, it is the time for guidance. And guidance is different from intuition, you see? It may use the same channel, but it is different. You see, intuition, in a way, it is part of you. Guidance. It is like it, it's not a part of you. It's like something different from you, which is telling you this. And it only says once. Then the mind jumps on it, tries to dismantle it, discredit it. It makes so much noise that eventually if you're not really paying attention, you will not remember what was it really. But the secret of truth is there waiting. His mind has, has been trained to a point where he doesn't make any decisions anymore. He doesn't search for anything anymore. He just waits for the next step. waits for the voice of guidance say this and he moves probably there are a lot more things that can be said and will be said about this for now food for thought it is enough for all of you I can guarantee you that the majority of this spiritual path it's about motivations, the right motivations, and staying on track. To become a seeker of truth is a part. To remain a seeker of truth is another part, bigger one. Because all the time, from inside, all these things that are still there, Nature is compelling you to go back to the same investments, to the same goals. So every time you have to make sure you come back to track, come back to track, come back to track. Or else you'll just awaken a long time after and then you have to go back again. And it is like this. Like I said, if you have any questions about this, bring them to me. Keep these words in mind and give yourself a chance, a real chance, 